and we're back. Welcome back to Wyatt G. I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Quick Trip, Venture Project Media, Thing of the Packers, you know, they didn't officially invite us here, but you know, we got officially comfy here. So shout out to the pack, they're not kicking us out. Another sponsors, we got Cheesehead TV, shout out Corey and Aaron, as well as K with a G. New shipments are out now and available in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Make sure you get your new K with a G. <laughs> you like that one? No, that was good. I like that. You had that. You had that commercial voice too. You can tell I've been practicing yeah, that, got, right? That's how the commercials do. Like they get all quick at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Available anywhere you anywhere you buy beer. <laughs> you get that ad that space, bad. right? Yeah. Can't spend that extra money. Shout out Matt Ramage, the one and only. Got to shout out the goat right here. I mean, I've been watching this guy's content for a long time now. It's been an honor to get to know him personally and really create a cool friendship. It's very exciting to have him on today and see what. What he's been up to and just killing the game. It's not just a regular podcast, everyone. We're grilling out too. I mean, we got some food, so I got to throw on some dogs here real quick, and then we'll dive right into the questions. You know what I mean? The guys got to eat, Matt. You Dude, gotta... I'm hungry, bro. I was yeah. promised food. We got some quick trip dogs. We got some broths. We got all types of good stuff over here. Exactly. Got to have the sponsor. Shout out the dogs. <laughs> hey, I know I usually do brat reviews, but you know I need a break. I need a bye week, guys. A couple of Johnsonville. Jalapeno cheddars. So while you're throwing those on, let me ask you this. When you're doing these brat reviews, anyone ever like tell you to just get the hell away from them? Like, just get out. No, get never, out of here. never, never, not yet. I've been, you know how scary it is to ask people, can I eat your yeah. food and get a beer too? Yeah, it's like, hey, uh, bud, you mind if I have a brat and if it sucks, I'm going to let everyone know <laughs> yeah. and we're going to video it and your face is going to be on it and everyone's going to know that you have the worst brats and all of Lambeau Field tailgating. And they're like, yeah, sure, let's go. It's a big responsibility, Matt. Like, I feel like I'm the mini Dave Portnoy, but with brats. So it's a, it's a big task at hand, guys. There's a lot of pressure. You guys don't understand out there. And that's the best part about Lambeau is you get to meet the best people in the world. Now, like Matt, one of the greatest people in the entire world. And it's a Packers <laughs> fan. Now, I want to talk about Matt a little bit from Green Bay, correct? Let's yeah. see your backstory. Well, actually, yeah, I was born in Green Bay. How far do you want to go back? <laughs> Honestly, hey, you're born in Green Bay. And what's your story of growing up through high school? Would you go to high school? Because that's important here yeah, in Green Yeah, I, I went to Green Bay East High School. My funniest story is that I failed gym class on the same field the Packers played on. You what? They played over there. How at, does that work? At, at East High School. I was not good at gym class. Uh, I wasn't good at any class. But gym class... And it's funny because my sister was like a track star. Like she ended up running for Nike. She's like summer finalist in uh, the Olympics. Uh -huh. Like she's like a big deal. And so like everyone expected me to, because she's my older sister. Like I'm going to be like, I'm going to run too. And they'd always like, oh, you should run. I'm like, I, I, I only run from curfew, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we are partying. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> that, I remember my gym teacher called me squirrel boy. People would talk about, you know, like uh, Packers play in this field. And I, at the time, I didn't care that much. Like, I cared, but, like, not, you know, I, I was I was kind of an idiot. But anyway, so, yeah, I, I grew up in Green Bay. I was born in Green Bay, but I moved to Fond du Lac. My family did. Hmm. So until, like, I was 12, then I came back, we came back to Green Bay. I moved when I was young. Should I put it on? And, yeah, you can put it on. Just and then uh, as a kid, like, we would have big Packer parties at my house. Like, my family was Packer fans. Like, that was, it was born and raised in me. That's what I always say. People say, how did you become a Packer fan? Like, I, it was born. The same yeah. thing with my kids. It wasn't a choice. If you were going to be another fan, you were going to have to rebel. My best friend next door was a Bears fan. And, like, they wouldn't let him come over on Sundays because the Bears were good then. It was in the 80s. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm the old. 80s. He was a Bears fan. They were good. And um, it, it, there, there was a lot of drama. On, on there. And, like, the Packers weren't good. So I remember, like, my first memories of being a Packer fan is my uncles and all my older cousins. They would make bets. Like, I bet you 20 bucks to get a first down right here because <laughs> the, the games weren't. <laughs> it's fun, yeah. Because the Packers weren't that good back then. So that's what it was there. Or maybe they were just degenerate gamblers. I don't know. Probably <laughs> that. But <laughs> As in Wisconsin, we usually that, are. That's kind of like how, like, like my first memory. Like, I remember uh, Don Mikulski was my favorite, my, my first favorite Packer player. The first, you know, I was old enough to actually care, be devoted. And I had a seven jersey, but it wasn't really a Don Mikulski jersey. It was just a green jersey with a seven on it, but it was Don Mikulski jersey to me. And we'd go outside and play football in the snow. I had a snowsuit. I had the thing stretched out over a snowsuit. When Brett Favre first came to Green Bay, or like first got the, the job, I was mad. I hated Brett Favre. We used to make jokes about it, like how all the offensive line would protect Brett Favre more than, than Don Mikulski. Yeah. Like we'd make excuses for him built in. But uh, it, it sucks he got hurt, but obviously it worked out all right. 
But uh, yeah, Don Mikulski was that first dude. And then, then just growing up, I was always just a Packer fan. And uh, I didn't really get into it. Like, even like when I lived here in town, like we, we rode our bikes up here a lot. But it wasn't like I wasn't one of the kids trying to get autographs. Like, I didn't know. Like, if, if I could go back in time, I probably would have done it a little bit differently. But I wasn't, I wouldn't say I wasn't diehard because I cared. Like, I get mad when they lost and I was all devoted. But I, I don't think that I knew that it was an option, that you could just roll up on the fence and the players yeah. are right there. Like, yep. you hear about it now. People are like, oh, when I was a kid, we did this and that. And we rode our bikes around here and stuff. But we were, I'm, I'm, this is a good area, you know, for Green Bay. When I, I grew up in the, you know. The outskirts. Yeah, I, I grew up where, <laughs> where, where, where most people's parents told them not to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't like to, to ride our bikes here was like like was like a big thing but we didn't i didn't really know that it was an option players were just hanging out because even now like, you could just be in a packers lambeau field parking lot and watch players coaches yep. whoever sometimes you don't even know who they are like i bet that person's important no like, yeah you're out here but we didn't know that as a kid though what's your most memorable play then like there's got to be one play that stands out the most like for me it was my favorite play, honestly, is probably when Haha Clinton Dix broke up the pass in the end zone to Rob Gronkowski when the Patriots came here and we won. That was probably like one of my favorite highlights, yeah. just because like shout I love Haha. Ha. Yeah, shout out to Haha. Ha. I love you, Haha. You saw, hey, you signed my jersey earlier this year, but that was like one of the plays that stuck out to me. Like you got Gronk and Brady, and he just rips it out of Gronk's yeah. hands in the end zone. Like what play stood out to you the most? I'd like to shout out like. A lot of my dudes over there in Green Bay, but I would say Donald Driver is probably one of my favorite plays when he uh, when he wouldn't go down. Oh, Sam you know, Fran was, at yeah, home? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah back jerseys. Because I felt like that was like the premise of the the Packers wide receiver group back then was every wide receiver, even to like De- Devontae, they all taught, like Donald Driver taught Jordy, they all taught, and Jordy taught the younger guys, it's yards after catch. Yeah. You don't go down, you stay up, and it was like a pride thing then, that they had. And uh, that play was like epitome of like all that. That was just a great play. Now, with that being said about, you know, your favorite play of all time, how is the Packers and just being a Packers fan totally changed your life, Matt? Because obviously we've seen the content. We've seen what like the opportunity brings. How has being a Packers fan changed your life? It actually has a lot. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I work at a cheese factory and like the people at my work, a lot of people know like what I do, but like, Game day for me, because I, I, I'm just a cheese factory worker. I'm a regular dude. I go to I go I go to a game. It's like I'm a celebrity. People want to take pictures of me. People want to buy me beers. People bring me like nachos and stuff. Then I go back to work the next day, and they're like <laughs> punching, getting like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it changed my life because just because it, it's not like I'm Justin Bieber. It's not like I'm some famous person. It's more like I see you on the internet. I like you. I want to hang out with you. Like same yeah. stuff. It's not Can't like idoli- they're not idolizing me. They're just like. Uh, they're happy to see me. I, I think that's awesome because it's it's like I come to Lambeau Field. And I got a bunch of friends, which is great because I don't like people coming to my house. But uh, I, I think it changed my life. Just feel like I'm gonna do. Like I have ambition to what I'm gonna do, and, and I, hopefully my plan is to do this for a living. Just talk about the Packers, go around, make content, and just have fun and be silly and not have to get up at two thirty in the morning to go work at Cheese Factory. And like I, I always tell people, like I'm, I'm the the most known non knowledgeable Packers podcaster. <laughs> not that I'm not knowledgeable, I'm not an idiot, but I'm not like diving in like, like, you know, like Andy Herman type guys, Aaron Nagler. They, I can't imagine the hours of film they watch. I actually got a Sunday ticket this year so I can rewatch the game. Ooh, nice. I, I, cause, uh, last year, you know, cause sometimes I'd be drinking during the game. And you forget a little bit, you, like, you know? Like, I'm a podcaster, someone at work will be like, hey, uh, what about that third quarter? Oh, that play? I'm like, yeah, I blacked out in the half. <laughs> <laughs> but like sometimes like you don't remember exactly. I was like, I got to rewatch that game because when you're in the moment, especially if I'm at the game, it, it's yeah. way different. It's you way can't different. tell at the game. It's yeah. so hard to tell where yeah. you are. Yeah, you're at the game. It, it's weird. It, it's a whole different thing. But like, even like when I I do my streams and I'm yelling about it, I'm just calling the game kind of in a way. I wouldn't say calling it because I don't put myself in the same <laughs> same breath as people who actually call the game. Yeah, yeah. But I yell about the game during the game and uh, you forget. But now that I got... That I, I can rewatch it. I'm not going to watch as much film as those guys. So you mentioned your podcast, right? Now, what inspired you? Obviously, the Packers inspired you. But, like, what inspired you to kind of, like, create that podcast and just, like, I, I'm i going to do this. I'm going to be consistent. And I'm just going to kill it. So, like, the, the, the first thing, like, when, when I first started getting locked in and, like, on the players where, like, I wanted to, like, talk to players. Like, I used to work at PDQ Car Wash right, right down the street here. All right? And, when, and this is, like... Before I ever did any podcast or anything. 
But the players would come in there to get their car washed every Tuesday. Tuesday was like get, was a was payday, mm-hmm. so they'd come in, and I got to meet like Gilbert Brown, Antonio Freeman, like all these guys, and it was just really cool because they're just regular people. So like that always stuck with me. It was a cool thing, but I never really cared. But then when I started um, doing content. I was like, I'm just going to ask these players. Look, at you. you're losing dogs over here. What'd you lose over here? I should have brought tongs, guys. That is such a party <laughs> foul. That's all right. That's all right. He <laughs> <laughs> tosses it back. It's already on the ground. It's going to be a great reel, guys. When I first started making content, I was making memes. I was Packer memes, right? Yeah. And because my son did uh, Packer, like, video ed- or picture edits. Mm-hmm. You take players, you know how the how the guys do that. Yep, yep, And yep. so he was doing that. So I started making memes on Instagram. He dropped another one. <laughs> so I started making the, the memes because like, I ain't going to learn how to gr- edit graphics, but uh, I can make some memes and it actually did all right. It started getting followers, but I got bored with it. So a, a friend of mine, the Green Bay guy, Ben, he was like, you should uh, maybe change your name to you, do a podcast and you could do all these things. And like he's like kind of the reason that I started doing it. And I was like, I wasn't sure I could. And then I did. And then... I lost a lot of followers. So people were like, oh, I don't want to follow this guy. And I thought it was a meme page or whatever. And then, but then it kind of leveled off. I started making content. Started, Cause I make jokes with my eyes. Like I used to have a Vine account. Yeah. I had like 20,000 followers and I would just do the eye jokes and it wasn't anything Packers that kind of died off. So then I was like, well, I could do the same thing, but just incorporate Packers into it. And then just talk about the Packers and see what happens. And then I, I started a podcast, which I had no business doing. Cause I had no idea how to podcast. And then Tom Crabtree, who I knew, because on Twitter in 2010, like he was real active on Twitter, right? Yep. So and I follow year. him. My son did a, a a book report on him or some kind of report on him. Where I said I DM'd him like, "Hey, my son wants to report on you. Can you grant him access? You know, have a chat with him or whatever." And then so then they chatted. I don't know. I think it was through like DM or whatever. And he did a report. He got an A. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So Crabtree was my guy. So then I was like, so, "Hey, Tom. actually, a, a fun a funny story about Tom Crabtree, right? One day he he tweeted out." I, you know, he's going to the Dan Cook concert, right? Right over here. And I was going to the concert too. Or I was like, hey, I'll be there too. Maybe I'll see you. And he's like, all right, cool. So then he damned me like through the show. Me and my brother-in-law are drinking. Like we're having a good time. We got, I got a driver. I ain't got to worry about nothing. <laughs> Crabtree DMs me. He's like, yo, uh, I, my, my wife couldn't go. I have a meet and greet after the show. You want to come with me to the meet and greet? And I was like, yeah, I do. I was more excited to meet Crabtree than I was Dane Cook. <laughs> and then I, I was a big Dane Cook fan. So we're in line. I'm drunk. I'm, I'm just like, I'm lit. And I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm here with a Packer fan. And he's like, bro, chill. Don't, I don't want no one to know. Oh, you know, because he wasn't, he wasn't like a face that everyone knew yeah. at that time, probably. Some people, but not everyone. And he was like, no, no, I don't want no one to know. People are like, is that Nick Barnett? I mean, that, that, that was a big talk if Nick Barnett was there. But anyway, so that's kind of how our relationship with, like, with me and Crabtree started. And then when I did the podcast, like, hey, you want to call it a podcast? And he would do it. And then like, I didn't really, I wasn't good at like trying to do a solo podcast. I tried, like I would, I would just try and try, but I really couldn't do it. I wasn't confident. And then, so I'd be like, hey, you want to do my podcast? And so basically he was the only guest, but he didn't know it. He figured I was doing podcasts every week. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just trying, but he was mostly like my, my, my main guest. So I started asking guys like Andy Herman and Nagel when I got confidence like to ask people to, to come on and like it started growing. But like Crabtree was a big part of that. But yeah, th- but then anyway, so I, I don't forget what the question was, but I started that whole that whole first podcast, but when it was mostly just Crabtree. Yep. And then I quit because I was like, I'm not really good at it. I quit for a while. I came back the next year. I was like, I, I studied it. I went, looked on YouTube trying to find how to be a podcast. Research, get better, to, yeah. Yeah, how, how can I do this better? Yep. And then, ha ha, Clint Dix, we started talking. And then he was I like, see. and it Crabtree was actually supposed to be the first guest on the podcast. I'm like, I'm relaunching it. want to be on the podcast. He's like, yeah. And even he was like, I was like, no, because I, I, I'm loyal. I'm like, I told you that you were going to be the first guest. You are. And he's like, no. He's like, you got ha ha, Clint Dix. That's a good get. <laughs> I'll be the second. It'll be all right. <laughs> so that's kind of how it went. That's it real, like, though, by time. That's pretty cool. Ha ha, Clint Dix was, was very cool because like, how how I got linked up with him is that he he did a video in his story. Yeah, the shoe to, one, man. He's the talking to the cleat, player. right? Yeah. He's talking to the cleat. And then I saw it and I was like, I, I should make that a video. I don't know why I clicked in my head because I didn't do it all the time with players. But I was like, I, I can make a video out of that. So I made a video out of that. And then someone messaged me, said, did, did Ha Ha Clint Dix follow you? And I was like, no, why would he do that? So I went and looked on Twitter. I'm like, oh, he did follow me. And then they're like, yeah. Uh, he liked your video because my sister, her her website uh, builder or the person that built her website, built 
Hot Clint Dix website, right? Real yep. good guy. Real cool. I forget his name. I shot him out. And then, so he showed Hot Clint Dix my video. Yep. He liked it, thought it was funny, and then followed me. And then we ended up messaging, and he's like, you know, I'll repost it. But it was actually not because he's Nike, Nike yeah. runner. It Told was, you to change his shoe yeah, to a Nike like, shoe. Yeah, he's like, it's got to be a Nike shoe. I can't be put Nike sponsored shoe. athletes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I redid it. And then after that, he just started sending me videos. Like little little short videos. And it wasn't like we we wrote it and like, hey, you should do this. I didn't give him any right. advice. No he scripting. just did it because he's got a life. He's he's in a locker room. He's just he's just goofing off. He's so then I would just try to make it funny. But yeah, but then he said, I'll do your podcast. And I was like, all right. And he's like, I'll come to your house. And I was like, well, you don't got to do that because, you know, I live a little bit north of Green Bay. He was, at, this is after he went to Washington. So he was just coming back to clean up his spot. Yeah. Like his apartment or whatever. What a real living. guy. Like, that's And so he was like, cool. no, no, I'll do it in your house. And then that's what we did. I mean, I, I think, like, how he put it is, like, they can tell. I remember him telling me this. You, you can tell when people have good intentions. You can tell when people are just having fun and, like, they're not, there's no negative vibes. And that's kind of, like, I think what drew him to me. Because I'm not trying to, like, I don't bash players. No, you can never game. bash him, bro. Yeah, it's even, one if, game. If they have a bad game. I'm not like an analyst, not a super no, I'm exactly. just a fan, having fun. And We're not cool. out there playing on the field, no. so I can't do it. You can't do that shit. That's all them. No, I can't even do I couldn't even be a trainer. I got a really tough question for you. Well, all right, better drink, take a drink for that. Who? Oh, man. Some of the guys, you know, this. I don't know how the guys are going to feel about this one, but who is your all-time favorite Packer player, man? That's a tough one. But I know. I had to ask it, man. I had no, like, to. What, it's always been Paul Horning. Mm. Right? Because okay. Paul Horning is, uh, I like his story. He like to drink, he like to party. That, that's not what I like about him, but I mean, that, that's kind of funny now. But, uh, well, I said Wisconsinites more. Yeah, and he, like back in the day, like he didn't want to play football because like football wasn't like, they weren't making millions of dollars. They weren't like, it wasn't changing their life and all that. So like, he was like, if we're not winning, then I'll just go be a lawyer or whatever. Or I forget what it was that he did. I think it was something like that. But he's like, I'm not, I'm not here for this. And then Lombardi came in and it changed everything. He ended up coming. And even, like, after a Packer, he was always around. He, there's a stories about him at bars and doing all this stuff. And, like, he was just – he's just a legend. And I like the number five. So, like, as my all-time player, it, it's Paul Horning. And I'll keep it that way because then I don't have to choose between a lot of the guys that I got to meet. What about Current? Because uh, – oh, Current? Yeah. Oh, Preston Smith is, is, oh, is Peace, my Oh, Shut up, yeah. Press. Preston Smith. In the TRX. For sure. But, like, Aaron Jones, too. Like, I got the shirt. You know what I mean? Showtime. Aaron Jones. Aaron, Aaron Jones, to me, is, like – like, they all are, though. Like, they're just so nice. Like, they're just good humans. They like, are. It's not even like if they weren't players. Like, Preston Smith, HaHa ha Clinton Dix, Aaron Jones. Like, all, I, I've only met Aaron Jones once, but he came up to me. Like, he was just so, he's so humble. He's so, like, I, I seen him, and I was like, I want to meet him because I was at the, the practice. Yeah. Preston Smith, let me sit with the families. And Aaron Jones seen me, and he came up to me. Like, they're all just, like, regular people. That, that's what I learned from doing content. Like, the biggest thing is talking to Packer players. I've never met one that was, like, like snobbish or like thought that, you know, whatever, you're beneath them. All of them, like even Hot Clint Dix, I said, came to my house, I was like, you don't got to take off your shoes. He's like, no, we take off our shoes. That's what we do. He was just so respectful, so cool. And he helped me because I was so nervous. And he kind of calmed me down before we recorded. And, and, and really, like, when he was at my house, Hot Clint Dix, doing the podcast, right? I had a laptop with a crap mic, right? The mic died. It wasn't working, right? I had two mics, right? So I had a blue ball, which are, are pretty good mics. And they kind of catch the audio all around. Yeah. Right? So it, the, the video version of this, you can see me sliding because I'm watching like the, the lines on the computer yeah. and they're not moving <laughs> on, on his mic. Yeah. But they are on mine. So I'm just sliding this thing over to try to get between <laughs> us. And the whole time he's got a McDonald's cup because he's not McDonald's on the way over. And he's just tapping the, the cup. The cup. Oh, and that's I was so like, good. and the whole time I'm like, is that ruining the audio? But I'm not going to be like, hey, stop that. But like I was just so panicked in my mind about everything going on around. Like, is the audio good? Like, are we doing this for nothing? So he's going to go home and be like, oh, sorry. I didn't Gotta do it Gotta redo right. it now. I, huh? didn't, I, I didn't do it right. So he just drove all this way and out of his way. Because he was in Green Bay. He had to drive all the way north and come, after he's done, come back to Green Bay and take the highway to Milwaukee. Because he was going to Milwaukee to airport. wherever. Yeah. Airport or whatever he was doing. And so like, he went out of his way for it. So I was like, if I screw up his audio, like, this is going to be horrible. Like, I'm not going to get no shot. Right. This. But, uh, it, it all worked out. He he was super cool. My list of like the 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 last guys like you know within a, this this generation would definitely be Ha Ha Preston, like Aaron Jones, even AJ Dillon. I love what AJ, AJ. Dillon does. AJ AJ Dillon, like what he does for Green Bay, like he did his football camp here. Like yeah, no one hey, does. I was a photographer I, for that. Yeah, yeah. Sean, I, AJ, he brought us on for that. Thank you, AJ, for bringing us on to that. 
Really cool. Yeah, dude, that was awesome because most players do it in their hometown, which is cool. I respect yeah. it and I understand it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You represent your hometown. You're going to, you know, bring attention to that, help out the kids in your in your community. Right. But it's also cool that uh, AJ did it here. And then he's a Wisconsinite. Even no matter what happens, if he ever, hopefully he doesn't leave yeah. uh, the Packers, but you know how the world, you know, the business of the Football is. No one knows what Goody in the office. Like I was telling you before this, you know, every away game, I'll wear a Packers away jersey. Every home game, I'll wear the green home. And then my Packers socks, always on game day. Now, what traditions do you have, Matt, on game day? Like, is there, like, a certain thing you wear, a certain thing you do? Like, do you have any traditions? It was, uh, like, lately, was Preston Smith jersey. Mm, Because, like, I'd always take full credit when Preston Smith did good. I wasn't all his training. It was me wearing his jersey. And he was on a (laughs) podcast. And he said that. I got him to say it. I have a clip of him saying, I'm the secret ingredient. Like, I, I try to, like, represent the players. Like, players I like, I try to shout them out. I try to, I want to, you know, wear it. This year, I got me a, a Ramage jersey. I never had a custom jersey, but one night, it was a drunk purchase. One day, the mail came, and I had a jersey in there. I was like, I must have bought this thing. But, <laughs> but hey, yeah, it's a great surprise. Say, great surprise, honestly. Yeah, dude, I, I, drunk me likes to hook, sober me up. You know what I mean? I don't really have any, like, superstitions or, like, anything crazy. But, uh, it, oh, look at this. We almost got an accent. What's going on? Traffic's no. nuts. It is, especially in Green Bay around here. It gets wild. Yeah. Now, people don't know how to drive. That's what it is. That's the problem. I don't want to go on that rant. Especially from Illinois. You do not know how to drive. I'm just saying. Yeah, speaking, I, I, of, speaking of Illinois, we play the Chicago Bears tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> Come on now, Matt. How are we feeling about the season, the year? Like, what's, what's your prediction on the season? And then, like, who is a key player you think we should watch out for? Um, I think like like uh, for this week, Jaden Reed right over there, number mm. eleven. Yeah, Easton with the Jaden Reed yeah, behind like camera. Him for, Shout out Easton, the season. Packers insider guys. You know what I mean? But like he, uh, I like him for this week, but I like him for the season. But he's a rookie, so like we'll, we'll see. Like, but Aaron Jones, I think, is very important. Like for for this whole season, just his veteran leadership and his you know Skills. His, his capability yeah. at running back. But I think just having a guy because there's not a lot of uh, veterans on that field. It's like uh, David Bakhtiari, like. Those type of guys, there's not a ton. So I think Aaron Jones is going to ball. And I hope the floor, like, like I love me some man on the floor. You know, people, people like to talk a little Maddie chat. Maddie so, LaFleur. You know, I love me some man on the floor. But I, he's got to get Aaron Jones the ball. Like, Facts. Last year, he could have done that more. And I get it, like, in the, in the past because – but I feel like this year, especially early on, like, I have all mm-hmm. faith in Jordan Love. But it, make it easy. Like, you, you don't have to – you know, make it a little bit easier for him. Get, let, let, let him get comfortable. Get a few well, running backs to work with. Yeah, you, you got some running backs to run the ball and screens. And Aaron Jones could do anything. So I what's the record then for this year? What, uh, what's the record and do we do win the division? I think we definitely win the division. But I think the division is trash. I, the, the Lions proved that they can do a little bit. And I wouldn't say they proved it in week one because uh, if not for a weird, you know, um, pick six. But I'm not going to discredit them because if the Packers won that way, you bet I'm flexing. I'm, I'm going to be talking all types of stuff. So I ain't mad at Lions fans for for uh, talking. But you know the fun thing about Lions fans? Lions fans have never talked trash. I talk trash. Yeah, they That's right my whole to. content. Bears fans, Viking fans, they all talk trash. Lions fans just started talking trash, and they're not good at it at all. So that's why I made a not tweet used, today. I, saw that. I, don't know. I was like, be patient with them. They're not used to talking trash. So uh, let's give them a little bit of time. Be patient. But, you know, I, I think the Packers uh, win the division. Like, how many... I didn't really ever say like uh, a record, but I would say 10, 11 wins. I think I think that they're going to have, you know, I'm not going to predict that they're going to be flawless. I think Jordan Love is going to make some mistakes. With the, these rookies are young guys. Right. There, there's going to be some mistakes made and some learning curves. But I think overall, I think Jordan Love's going to be good. And uh, I, I, I'm i excited, dude. And Same. Very excited. Yeah, I, I do. I, Big year ahead. Big year ahead. People like want to like dismiss Jordan Love. It's just ridiculous. Even the people who are saying that he's going to be this or that, which I don't see a lot of that. But I see Bears fans. Oh, you all think Jordan Love is going to be a Hall of Famer? Like, no one said that, bro. We're all like, hopeful, confident. Because, like, I was going off with people today because uh, I, I posted a quote on Twitter or on Facebook about uh, A.J. Dillon. Said Jordan Love is that guy and he's going to be ready and he's this and that. And they're like, oh, what's he supposed to say? It's like, dude, like, they're not going to fake it. First of all, A.J. Dillon and Jordan Love, I think, are really good friends. I mean, yeah. They'll be best friends. So, obviously, he's going to say that. But close. They're not going to just lie. Like, if you have a trash quarterback, you're not going to say, oh, he's a great, you know, he's great. They might say, we well, support him, this and that. They, they don't have to lie about it. Like, 
and they're best friends. So like, it's just stupid to get mad. What do we got here? Should I eat that one off the ground or what's going on? Hey, grab whatever, Matt. Hey, we got one last thing. What can we expect from you this season like, in terms of content, events? What do we got? What, what do we expect next from Matt Ramage? All right. This year, I'm going all in a little bit. I'm going Monday. Every Monday, I'm live. Uh, I believe it will be 630 because I think it will be before Monday Night Football. But I'll be talking about all Sunday's game preview, Monday Night Football game. Tuesday, we have a fantasy football show. I got a couple of co-hosts, Dakota Mitchell and uh, Rev Trev. He's joining me. Wednesday, we're doing the Pick'em show. I got a Pick'em league. Uh, like 400, over 400 people in this Pick'em league. I didn't know I had that kind of pull. I should have charged them. But, uh, <laughs> but and I got a co-host that, uh, Pack Daddy, Ryan Slip. Yep. It's Pack Daddy on Twitter. The Packernet uh, podcast, great podcast, way better than mine. Uh, so we're doing that. <laughs> and then Thursday, I'm going to bring bring back the, uh, trivia for Cheesehead. I got a friend, a smart person, built me a program, so I have all the questions there. Cause that's time consuming to do a trivia show. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that's what I tried to do. And I was like, yo, I, my work ethic don't match this show. You know what I mean? So I got some help with that. So th- that'll probably start next week. If not next week, it'll, it'll be the week after. Are they rebuilding Lambo back here? What's going on? But uh, yeah, th- that, and then also I'll have I'll, I'll have different stuff like talking about the games, you know, whatever riles me up. Cause that's kind of how I do yep. my content. It's like, I'll be at work reading tweets and people trashing the Packers. I get fired up. I go outside. I make a video. That's how, like, those videos, like, I was on a Pat McAfee show, my clip was, and, like, NFL film show. Yeah. And it was all just rants. And then I felt so bad. I was like, oh, if I'd have known those was going to be on TV, you know, I might have, like, sucked in my gut a little bit or done something different. But uh, you never know when the, when, the, when those ones pop off. But, yeah, Thanks. that's what I'll be doing. I did. You'll get sick of me by the end of this year. I'm gonna be every. And, and I better. I better. I better. And, and, and the home games. I'm gonna be out here tailgating, uh, hitting up to tailgates, do, getting some content. Maybe not quite as good as your content, but we're gonna try. And hey, either way, this is great content. Oh, let's go! Let's go! We gotta go back go right there just to end the show, right, guys? Hey, Matt, brother, I appreciate it very much. The hey, content is killer. Oh, of course, man. We've been talking about this for a while. I'm glad we could finally do it, and we did it in a great scene. No, we did right before the Bears week. So, hey. Make sure you all go check out Matt Ramage this year. He's got a lot of stuff cooking up, baby. Make sure you like, subscribe. Road to a million. We got a lot of cool surprises and announcements coming out real soon. So make sure you guys go check it out. YAG Matt Ramage signing off live at Lambo. Go pack, go. Go pack, go. Go pack. The Bears. I gotta pee bad now. <laughs> oh my god, bro.